So now I'm out of the car and on the way, I'm going to head up the hill here to uh, a very uh, nice Lewis Loch. It doesn't produce huge fish, but it's a lovely walk. The walk's about six miles, I suppose. Um, and uh, it, it's a lovely loch as well. I just like the setting. Plus it's very clear water and uh, I, I really like the nice clear water. Um, and it seems to have like two different populations of fish in it, which makes it quite interesting. So up the hill we go. It's all these wee channels and puddles. It's like walking through a maze. Uh, and these are, can be quite dangerous, I don't know. As you can see, the stick just disappears into the muck at the bottom. And up bubbles of methane. Uh, so uh, you certainly don't want to put a foot in there. Um, and uh, the moor, quite a lot of the moor is quite soft. So it, uh, it uh, is worth taking some care. And here we are in the law, a wonderfully clear law with great water and reasonable wee fish, but not, nothing huge in it. So back on the loch today and the wind is in a different direction to maybe the last video that I made here. Um, it has come to the north, so that makes it a wee bit tricky and a bit cool. Uh, but nonetheless, it's going to be interesting to see how the loch fishes. Um, so we'll maybe get a fly on and punch it out and see see what goes on and then we'll, we'll have a quick few minutes casting and then I think it'll be time for a quick cup of tea. So that's me started fishing. I have a soldier palmer on the top and a goat's toe on the point, a very unusual combination for me, but uh, brighter flies seem to do better on this loch for some strange reason. And you can never kind of explain what works where, I guess. Um,
I actually have an intermediate tip on here. It's just, it's a very, very slow sinker. In fact, if the lock's calm, it'll not break through the surface film. It's so light, but it just takes you down that wee bit to help sink the flies. But just with this lock being quite shallow, close in, and so stony, sometimes it also means that uh, you catch a lot of rockfish um, and spend half your time losing flies to the stones. Time to make some tea, I think. It always is time to make some tea, but this isn't the best part of this loch. It fishes better at the other end, so I'm not too surprised that I'm not moving many fish down here. But, uh, oh well, let's get up the other end and see if we can't get ourselves a fish or two after we have a cup of tea, of course. Sweet fish on the on the, the soldier palmer. Good quality fish, maybe a pound and a half in it. So, there we go. Another wee fish, a wee bit on the skinny side maybe. Um, but maybe, oh, he's not a pound and a half, but he might be three quarters in there. And we'll, we'll let him go on his way. Take himself off. Ooh, and away he goes. And I've been joined by the divers. They're here to complain about me catching their fish for them. They'll not be so happy about that. So, looks like I'm not the only fisherman on the law. These divers have appeared. To give me a piece of their mind. I'll not be catching many more fish while they're here, that's for sure. It's in that. I keep casting like that, I'll not be casting it, catching many more fish anyhow. But the wind has kind of gone off just all of a sudden because there was a wee breeze when I got here. Wee breeze even when I hooked the fish. Oh, there we go. We moved a good fish but didn't touch him at all. Uh, might be worth covering him again. But on this law, to be honest, my experience is, if they come once, that that's it, they'll not come back.
course a key part of the whole experience is getting the, the stove going for the tea and the lunch and hopefully I'll soon be having a good scoff because we're nearly boiling here So I've changed the sink tip out for, a, or well, intermediate tip really, for a, a floater, full floater just, um, to see if I can find my way into consistently getting a few fish. Because I'm picking up the odd one, but nothing consistent. Uh, I've moved to what I would be more traditional flies for the circumstances. I've put a black Zulu on the top and down the bottom, I've got a goat's toe. I only have the two on because I mostly I just fish two these days. Um, but to be honest, it doesn't seem to be making any difference. I'm still not picking up any fish. And the very few fish that were rising appear to have stopped that. So um, it is possible that um, they're just not interested at all. Well, that's us finished out here for the day. So it's time to embark upon the walk back. Another good day, though the fish were proven hard to get today. And once I changed to the floater, I got absolutely nothing at all. Um, I, I think they were probably lying pretty deep. Um, and with the cold northerly wind, maybe it was keeping them down a bit. But we'll get over here up the hill and get away back to the car it's still a pretty substantial walk back to there so uh, this is the kind of sloggy bit of the trip so as I go along here I can see all the hills along the west coast of Scotland um, and actually, in as far as sky as well. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm aiming for Sullivan um, because he makes a good, uh, a good uh, aiming point on the route back to the car. Well, that's the track in sight again. So it's just a matter of getting down this hill and uh, then up a wee bit of the track to where the car's parked. Uh, it's, uh, this ground, as you can see, is a bit rough and kind of not desperately haggy, but a bit up and down. So makes for quite tricky walking. Uh, plus there's a, a few wet spots here and there. At the minute it's not too wet because there hasn't been much rain recently uh, but it can uh, the, some of the the wee puddles and whatnot can grow to quite considerable size in the winter when there's when there's a lot of water on the moor Well, that's us back onto the track at the end of another classic day of real wild Lewis Brown trout fishing. And I've got to say, in a way, it's a shame more people don't do it because in my experience, most visitors are rarely out of sight of their car. Um, 
and they don't get the full wild brown trout experience I suppose as part of the joy here is being able to wander miles of moor to thousands of blocks however in saying that it's good to see the car again <laughs> 